Attempts at transforming research findings into farmers' benefits are not new. In the 1960s, a green revolution swept across Asian countries, dramatically increasing agricultural productivity. To see if lessons could be learned from this experience, the RIU Advisory Board visited the MS Swaminathan Research Foundation in Pondicherry, India. Well, the Green Revolution is uh, what I call a, a symphony approach. Uh, the package of technology, the package of public policies, the package of services, and above all, farmers' enthusiasm. When all of them came together, you had a dramatic progress. It was a revolutionary progress, not an evolutionary progress. 200%, 300%, not 2%, 3%. Today, Professor Swaminathan's foundation continues to lead the way in developing environmentally sustainable agriculture, sustainable food security, and the preservation of biodiversity. On a recent visit, members of the RIU's Program Advisory Board were able to see and experience at first hand the work of the foundation. And I think the group, with the help of DFID, uh, is uh, searching for various successful models. They have found the BioVillage model of our foundation as an interesting example, where it has two aims, conservation and enhancement, not only conservation, and enhancement of natural resources, particularly land, water, and biodiversity. The other is in increased productivity on farm and increased income off farm. So that I think they are fascinated by this concept of looking at strengthening ecological security and livelihood security at the same time. There's no doubt at all that uh, I think India as well as uh, China have uh, a lot of uh, lessons to provide to Africa. Uh, here is actually countries which uh, have actually the experience of development in terms of uh, supporting small producers. Uh, they've developed you know, very simple technologies which are quite relevant to the African situation. You know, in, the, in the past, research has made a significant difference to the lives of millions of farmers in Africa and Asia and also to their families and to the wider community. That's one of the reasons why I think we need to do more, get more research into use, build on this past experience, and why DFID is increasing its investment in agriculture research and fisheries and forestry research as well. One major challenge is upscaling, taking successfully validated research outcomes and promoting them widely at national and regional levels. How do you convert a small demonstration plot into a mass movement, farmer's movement? And that is what the group is now searching for methods, searching for international best practices by which this transformation from a small government program could become a mass movement. At one level it's basic research which is demystified, technology is demystified. At another level it's action research. You work with the community and develop models that work at the grassroots level and then you try to network for upscaling and replication. After attending the Swami Nathan Research Foundation, I bought a piece of land and put into practice what I had learnt in my village. I cultivated vegetables in my field and the villagers took interest and followed what I have done. There has been social uh, impact in terms of empowerment, in terms of greater participation by the women we work with in, uh, outside the home. They're being recognized as uh, e uh, equal contributors to bringing money home and so getting, uh, earning the respect of the men folk, both at home and outside in the village community. In fact, just a little while ago, one of the women was telling me like, now uh, people introduce their husbands as this is so-and-so's husband, not the other way around. My wish to join the group was accepted by my family. They could see I knew what I was doing, so they gave me a respected position within the family. But like any revolution, all the right elements and incentives need to be in place. It is not only research alone which can trigger a revolution. Research which is supported by appropriate uh, government policies, uh, particularly in terms of marketing and uh, remunerative pricing. Uh, and at the same time, farmers must be convinced that this is something good for them, not only for the country or to government or to the scientists, but good to them. Farmers, researchers and policy makers must learn to work together to ensure that new technologies and practices are effective and can be widely adopted. 
the communication link between the researchers and the people at the field level in this uh, context, the farm community, is very important. And our chairman, Professor Swaminathan, emphasis, keeps emphasizing on the linkage, on the two-way linkage, the lab to land and the land to lab. So technologies which work at the lab level should be positioned or should be simplified in a uh, manner and uh, that you are able to reach it out to the community and train the community to apply it in practice. In the villages where there have been successful models, they themselves become the spokespersons for spreading the word. So when we go to a neighboring village, it's so much, it's become so much easier for the work to take off there. So it requires a lot of groundwork in terms of capacity building and making the needs emerge from the community themselves. Only then in the long run it would be sustainable. So that's, uh, so a lot of the effort here is spent on capacity building. Not always everything comes together because there is uh, there's no point in my telling the farmer this variety is good for you unless I can give them the seeds of the variety. That is where the policy maker comes in terms of seed multiplication, production, distribution and so on. They know which technology will help them, which technology will not help. You can't get them convinced by propaganda alone. It has to be what we call not even seeing is believing. Sometimes people say seeing is believing. For them, harvesting is believing. When they have harvested the crop, taken it home, converted to money, then they are convinced. I think it is an important experience to visit Pondicherry and the Swaminathan Foundation. The technology is certainly transferable to Africa from the point of view of agricultural access to credit and the demands of the population and the way they organize their people to build capacity. I think there are lessons we can learn and transfer to Africa from the foundation. The main lesson that emerged from our visit at the Swaminathan Foundation is that uh, it is possible to empower local communities in ensuring that our information is available uh, at their own doorsteps, at the village level. Uh, it is important though that uh, we provide the required uh, infrastructure to make that information available. In addition to that, I think uh, the importance of ensuring that uh, microcredit is available at the local level is absolutely critical if we're going to address issues of uh, agriculture development uh, in Africa. Finally, progress is a synergy between technology and public policy and farmers' enthusiasm. These are the three major ingredients for success.